I'm from the city of Cape Town. I've been heading research and development for the past three years within the city of Cape Town. Our role specifically is to look at the water quality. But my presentation will talk about the overall activities that happen within water and sanitation. Because we don't work in isolation, we look at other branches as our clients. Uh, the people who are responsible for treating drinking water and those who are responsible for treating wastewater are our clients. Because they cannot treat and tell, they, they cannot be a player and a referee. So we need to be this middleman who ensure quality to our consumers. <coughs> so City of Cape Town is a service provider for water. So as a service provider, we need to be accredited to ensure that we provide the, a, a quality product, which is water. So this is to ensure our customer, who are our community, that as the city of Cape Town, we are, pro we are providing you with a quality product. Water and sanitation need a multi-scaled team. This is uh, just an indication of how big water and sanitation is. Each head here represents a section. So there is a workforce behind every head in here which makes sure that the city of Cape Town received good drinking water and also the treatment of sewage. So I'm just going to go through this just to indicate the water cycle that water has to go through from the mountains at the catchment, uh, from the catchment it goes to the dams. Most of our dams are managed by the city of Cape Town, others are managed by the, by the National Department of Water Affairs. I will go deeper into details as to where are those dams situated. From the dams, it goes to the water treatment works, where we, we treat this water for consumption, because you cannot just get that water directly from the dam. So we have got water treatment plants situated in various locations, targeting the dams that we are treating. And then from the water treatment works, we deliver this water to the reservoirs, Reservoirs as well are also spread across the city of Cape Town. From the reservoirs, it goes to the customer. So we, we look at our community as our customers. Because you need to treat customer well, the customer must also feel proud about the service that they are receiving. So instead of looking at uh, locals as as consumers, consumers didn't go where people feel good and say, you are my customer. So we find people responding very well when we consider them as our customers. Then once the water reaches uh, the customer, the end, the, the, out, the, the end product from the customer is a waste water. So once the water leaves your house, it's no longer in a good state where you can use it. It goes to the it goes to the wastewater treatment works, and then we have got a, a department which is just responsible for the transportation of sewage, so um, wastewater which might be in the form of sewage or any domestic water, and then from there there is an activity that happens within the wastewater treatment works, and then we it's either we take this water back to the customer or we take that water back to the ecosystem. Mostly we take the treated effluent back to the nearby rivers. Sometimes we take that if we leave treated effluent back to the sea. This uh, just give a summary of what we do as water and sanitation. So we've got water sources that are managed by the Department of Water Affairs and the water sources that are managed by the city of Cape Town. So we, when we got water from those sources, it goes to the city of Cape Town infrastructure. Those are our water treatment works. Water treatment plants are controlled by the city of Cape Town. While we are receiving water from the, from the dams that are managed by the National Department of Water Affairs. Dams like a day water scroff, nature is, I mean, Somewhere near after you go, yeah, near Godotsbury, after Pa, yeah. after Flying Tube. 
So it, that one is, it, 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 it belongs to the Department of Water Affairs. And then we've got dams like Wemasu Wemasu in Cape Town, I mean in Stellenbosch. That one is managed completely by the city of Cape Town. But the point is most of the dams are not falling within the city of Cape Town. If you can see that picture, we borrow water from other municipality. But we are lucky that we have got enough infrastructure to, to treat the water. Then once we got raw water from those water sources, we we treat that water and send them back to the municipality that we borrowed water from. We have, we, we have got contracts with Stalemosh municipality, Dragon State municipality, where we take treated water back to them. We take water in a, in a raw state, you cannot utilize them, you cannot drink that water, but we use our own infrastructure and then we send the water back to them, the treated water back to them. And then we, we have got a bulk department. The bulk department is responsible for looking after our dams. And then from dams, we have got water ret reticulation branch. Reticulation branch is responsible for the transportation of water from the treatment plant to, to the customer. Because we have got this the long network of pipeline underground which needs maintenance. And then from the customer, we have got sewage, so, I mean sewage stuff now that needs to be taken back to the wastewater treatment works because it's no longer in a state where it can be used. It needs to be treated. And then we, we have got wastewater department which look after our wasted water. So reticulation branch also came into play. They transport that sewage from the customer to the wastewater treatment works, where it gets treated. Sometimes we, we reclaim that water back to the customer. Uh, in Cape Town, we, we have got the major, waters are, major water user, which is the canal walk. Those who have been to canal walk have seen this uh, nice view of water. That's a treated effluent coming from Athlon. Instead of them buying drinking water to do their recreational activities, they buy treated effluent because it's cheaper. And for us, we also encourage that so that people don't use the drinking water for, for such purposes. And then other water we took back to the environment. Most of the time we discharge back into the nearby rivers. Sometimes we have got uh, sea outfall, which always creates a problem. People who always complain about us dumping directly into the sea. There was also a case somewhere in Cape Bay where people were up, they were up in arms worrying about the untreated effluent. But we had problem with the storm water. So when the storm water is not working fine, it also in, uh, impacts on our reticulation system. Where at the end you end up having some spillage. When the sewage spill into the, into the sea, then that creates a problem. And also electricity, the power cuts are not helping us because we rely on pump station to pump those sewage from one area to another and when the electricity is not working, then we tend to have overflow and then it impacts on our reticulation system. May we ask something? Yes. Do Dragon Stain and Stellenbosch pay for the treated water? We, we have got agreement with this municipality that we will get water from, we will get raw water from you. We are responsible for the treatment. And then we, there, there is a, a discounted rate that they get water. They don't buy water like anyone else because we, we cannot survive without, without this municipality. So we need to reach a, a mutual agreement that will assist us and they will also benefit. So they need to see the benefit of giving us water. So we are saying we will use our infrastructure to treat water, but we will give you certain amount of water for free. And then we get also water to, for our customers. So there is that arrangement, which is, which is helping the city of Cape Town because we don't have enough water. And we cannot create a dams. We, that is something that is just natural, it will always be that way. So those municipalities are really helping us and they will continue assisting us. 
I'll do something that you are looking at because the picture currently is it's not looking good. The only good thing is that we are looking at the political environment. We are all under the same political organization, which is DA. But if people start playing politics, where one municipality say we cannot give you one, then we'll be trouble. But at this stage, it's working, but it's a scale situation that we as the resident of Cape Town needs to be very grateful. Okay, this gives us statistics of uh, our water supply. We currently have uh, 14 dams uh, that supply water to the city of Cape Town. And the capacity of the major six dam is about 900 million cubic meters. We have got 12 water treatment works, of which the capacity is about 1.6 million liters per day. That, that's how much we can store in our 12 water treatment works. And we have got 26 reservoirs that are distributed across the city of Cape Town. This is just to indicate the, the length of the pipelines that uh, delivers the water to the city of Cape Town. We're looking at about 630 kilometers of, of pipelines. If you, if you are to line them in a straight line, you will get that, uh, that length. And then currently our population is sitting at about 3.8 million, just the city of Cape Town. Those are just some of the dams that are supplying city of Cape Town. We take pride of some of the dams that, that, that are situated on top of the Table Mountains. This one, Stenbrass Dam, is just uh, somewhere on top of the Gordons Bay. We must hope we're just outside Stellenbosch. Stenbrass Dam, those are also just outside Strand. So those are some of the dams that we are relying on to supply water to the city of Cape Town. In Mozambique, we're getting water from from Stian Brass Dam, and we are also getting, wa getting water from the water cloth. The water cloths uh, take water to the four water treatment plants and also to Black Heath water treatment plants. So the water that uh, we get from that we get from the municipalities have to go through this long chain from, from Stellenbosch coming to four water treatment plants coming to Black Heath, and then we utilize this water there. From there, the waste, the waste water is taken back to the, uh, to the Mitchell's Place or Cape Flats. So that's where our waste water treatment work, uh, our waste water is treated. Sometimes we also discharge it to the sea. Okay, I'll show you a picture of the dams. Then from the dams, we go to the water treatment plants. Then we have got Stian Brass water treatment plants. We, we have got Black Heath water treatment plants. Those are the main water treatment plants that treat water that supplies this area that we are in currently. And then we also have got four water treatment plants. This one is just outside Makassar. And then we, we have got four flame water treatment plants. Those are just examples. As I indicated that we have got over 12 water treatment plants are across the city of Cape Town. But somewhere, somehow, all those water treatment plants, they are interconnected so that when we are encountering problems from one treatment plant, we can still be able to supply water to, to everyone within the city of Cape Town. So what happens when the water reaches water treatment plants? It's, it's still in a good state where you can, where you can, drink, where, where you can drink it. It's very bad. Those who have driven past the dams, you, you, you could see that it's not in a good state that you can drink. The, sometimes the animals have got access to it. So the level of E. coli and the other toxic chemicals are so high. So we need to treat that water before we take it to the consumers. So we normally use lime to, to take care of odor and bad taste because the water is so smelly, the taste is so bad. So we first get rid of that odor and the bad taste using lime. So we have got contracts with the chemical companies that supply us, us with, 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 with large bulk of chemicals. 
So sometimes there are challenges because people tend tends to take shortcuts and provide inferior chemicals, which in turn affect water quality. So as a result, the scientists we must first test the chemicals that are being provided to the city. Before we use those chemicals to test our water, we test those chemicals first. Once we are happy with the, with the quality, then we go ahead and start utilizing those chemicals to treat the water. And then there is also a biological reaction that happens in there because we need to treat the bacteria, the, the bacteria, the viruses in water, all those needs to be taken care of. So we, are, we do have a biological reaction that to take care of that. And then we do have a filtration state where we have got our cycling tanks, which, uh, which have a, 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 the, the, the bedrock, we don't have a bedrock there, but we have got a fine sand where all those bacteria and viruses will enjoy cleaning the, to the sand and then the pure water will pass that stage. So we, we go through a, a various stage until we get uh, clear water. Even though we are, in, we are impressed with the quality of water, before we, do the, we let the water out of the water treatment plant, we also chlorinate. Chlorination assists in, in making sure that there's no contamination of, uh, of water along the pipeline. Because as you have seen, I talk about 630 kilometers of pipeline, so anything can happen along the distribution. So we make sure that we chlorinate our water as, as it leaves the water treatment plant. And again, we chlorinate our water when it reaches the reservoirs. So we also take advantage of the, water, of the speed of water as it enters the water treatment plant. We generate electricity out of that. So our water treatment plants can be self-sustained even when we have water, water I mean, power cuts, we can still be able to continue with treating water. So if for some reason we have got problem in treating, in treating water within the city of Cape Town, looking at the capacity of our dams, of our water treatment plants, we can be able to go at least three days without treating. Our customer can get water for the period of three days if we shut down everything. It's only on the fourth day, on the fourth day that we can start worrying as to what next. So still with the reservoirs, our reservoirs, uh, we've got 24 of them within the city of Cape Town. We make sure that all of them are covered to, to maintain the water quality and avoid people dumping things inside. And also in covering reservoirs also prevent evaporation and transpiration. So there is less water loss because if you have got these open dams, when it's hot, you tend to lose more water due to evaporation and transpiration. So all our reservoirs are, are covered because even the beds, they don't help it at all. Beds will always go and mess up on, the, on, the, on our reservoirs. So when we cover it, then we are also protecting contamination from bad species as well, because they are also a source of E. coli. So we, we work closely with engineers. As you see, we, there is, we do have massive pipelines. And some of the pipelines I can even walk without bending, I can walk through. Even those ones that uh, take care of the sewage, they are so big in a way that uh, you can easily walk through. As a result, they also collect uh, uh, effluent that is coming from the storm waters. So when you, when you dump stuff in the storm water, they end up on the sewage works and then they result in the blockage of, of sewage. And then as, as a result, you will have contamination of, 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 of the nearby rivers or, or the beaches as well if we are dump, if we are discharging into the beach. So that ends up to be a problem. Currently, the city of Cape Town is depending on surface water. 98% of our water supply is, uh, is surface water. Only 2% is groundwater. And this picture is very worrying. And we, we are looking at changing this picture so that we can have less reliance on on surface water. 
Because this clearly indicates that if we are to experience drought and our rivers are running dry, then we have got problems because we are relying mostly on, on rivers. So we are relying very less on the groundwater, not because we don't have enough groundwater to, to eat our but The perception of people towards groundwater and aquifers is something that needs to be changed. Yes, from the municipality point of view, it makes sense to use surface water because you, you generate enough, enough money from that. If you are using groundwater, if you encourage people to use groundwater, then it means that you will end up having less uh, revenue and so on and so forth. This is the politics at a higher level. But as scientists, we encourage people to, to, I mean, to save water by all means. And we, are, we know very well that we, we do have capacity to also consider groundwater. So, yes. uh, from your um, organization plan that you showed, those wells were yeah. up on the west coast or were two places? The pumping wells, yeah. they were only available on the west coast, right up north. No, not only the, the north. We, we do have them placed in a strategic position across the, across the city rather than yeah, we are, we are talking about the pump station. Mm -hmm. We do have lots of pump station because for us to get this water move from one point to another, you, you cannot only rely on gravity. More often we, we need electricity, we need, we need those pump station to, especially when there, when, there, when there is a slope, to get water up the slope you need a pressure. So we target those areas that if we don't have electricity, if we don't have, uh, ele I mean, electricity, there won't be any water moving using the gravity. So in some areas we have got reservoirs situated in the mountains, then you just get that free flow. But in some areas it doesn't work that way. Yes, for water, for drinking water, yes, it might work. But when it comes to sewage, that becomes a problem because most of the people are, are staying in the lowland areas. So to get the sewage out of their areas to the sewage works, then you also need to, to pump that. So we do have uh, over 25 pump stations. It, it, it's, it's a lot. And we are still considering uh, living more because sometimes when you open your, your, your tap, you will see that the pressure is so low, it, it takes some time. Yes, in the morning it, you, there's high pressure. When you open it, you will feel that there's more air coming there because there's too much pressure because most of the tap has been closed. But during the day, then uh, it tends, you tend to have low pressure. So we, the, the importance of, of pump station comes into, into place. Sorry, yes. can I ask you about the desalination there? You, you're planning on... Um, 64 from desalination. Just go back to the slide, I think it's. So, you know, the desalination, the 17%. So, you want 17 Sorry, 17%. So, you don't have any desalination plants at the moment? At this moment, we are still at uh, feasibility stage. We are checking the feasibility of considering that. But it's so far, the results are showing that it's a very expensive uh, uh, exercise. So we we are looking at that. If it, if uh, if need if need be, we will go to that. But it's not an option at this stage, considering the cost involved. But uh, we we did experiment it. We we know that it can be done. But uh, we need to justify the expenditure to the politician to get that because it, it gets very much political as well. Why are you spending that much? while there, there are other sources. But at the same time, we don't want to be caught off guard when we are experiencing drought and we, are, we don't have capacity to utilize, to consider, to utilize other, other resources. So we, we also look at uh, spring waters as well. We did a thorough research to investigate the potential of our spring waters. Do we have spring waters that we can consider for drinking water around the city of Cape Town? Yes, we do have some. Some are not really in a good state, although you still find people utilizing them because of their historical attachment to the springs. They feel like we have been drinking this water for too long, we never got sick. But the recent results indicate that 
the water is not of good quality. And when we try to 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 fed, to refresh the the springs, they will go and and, uh, and damage the fence because they feel like the city is not doing any justice to them. We have been drinking this water for too long. You cannot just come to there and tell us not to drink this water anymore. So th those are some of the challenges that we 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 are counting. And then as for the groundwater, at, at like this area is relying mostly on groundwater because we also don't have major rivers there. We don't have bigger depth that side. So that two percent of groundwater is it's mostly of the of the water used in Atlantis. Can I? So this is just uh, showing the the size of the pipelines that we have that we have. If you line them up, it's just like a traveling from, uh, from Cape Town to Australia, the water reticulation network. That's how much it takes to deliver your drinking water from the dams to the customer. And then as for sewage, it's, it, it's just like a traveling to Romania. If you like those, ne those uh, network, and as I said, the pipes are so big that I can walk through. So you can just imagine, someone has to maintain that, they've got a, a lifespan that needs to be, every now and then you need to replace this, because you cannot, it's not uh, something that will just be there forever. They need to be replaced, so you need people who are highly technical to deal with that, because every now and then we also encounter pipe burst, we need to deal with that. So when a big pipe burst, it's, it's a disaster. I also have got one of the photos where you can see what actually happened when a, a pipe burst. So you get a situation like this where it's so difficult and so dangerous to work in an area where when you have got a, such big pipe bursting. But we, we have to deal with that. So this is one of the pictures that was taken years back if in, in Long Street. There was a pipe burst along, along the Long Street. Then can, you can just imagine when you get out of, of the restaurant and you find your car lying in the road just like that. So those are some of the challenges where we also need the engineers and is to come up with a good measures that will ensure that we don't encounter regular pipe burst. Also, innovation. It's very much important to us. Water and sanitation, we are always uh, having challenges dealing with the sanitation, especially in informal settlement. The way cases uh, about the open toilets in uh, informal settlements, as the city, we need to find uh, better ways on how to deal with that. So innovation is very much important because you need to make those people feel human as well because it's, it's so difficult when that thing is being politicized, but uh, you can see the point. It's, it's just inhumane when you can just take put uh, an open toilet just like that. But sometimes the community will say, we will put the structure ourselves. Give us the, 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 the base and then we will put that there ourselves. But well, with time, people just say, no, you cannot just give us only a base. Why do you think I can use it like this? So it becomes a problem. But we are saying we need to look at that on, on, a, on a positive note. Also, someone once asked me, like, why did it cost three million to build this small thing? I mean, it's one of the pipe stations we had. So when you look at it, it looks like it's a waste of money. Three million goes down the drain. But this is what actually happened, because there is something that needs to be happened, that needs to be done before you put that structure. And there are equipments and uh, bigger machines that need to be bought to, to, to sustain that uh, sewer pump, pump station. So as a result, uh, all those are uh, over 25 uh, pump stations that we have situated across the city of Cape Town. They cost us a lot. And when uh, people are dumping uh, illegal stuff on the sewer pipelines, they also affect those pump stations 
and then we also have to spend a lot on maintenance as well and repairs if need be. So we, we have got 27 wastewater treatment plants across the city of Cape Town and we, we treat about 616 million liter per day. That's the amount of water that we treat from our customers. So water that goes down the toilets, down the drain, all goes to the wastewater treatment plants. And then in one day, that's how much we, we receive in our water treatment plants. And the, what we can treat in a day, it's about 724 milli, million liters per day. So we are still okay that we are receiving 660, but we can accommodate up to 724. So, so far we haven't reached a crisis, but we will soon we'll reach a point where we are receiving more than, the, more than the capacity that we can accommodate. That's why we are also looking at other areas where we can have uh, wastewater treatment works. And we are even challenged because people don't want wastewater treatment plants close to where they are staying. So this is one thing that the SDC were dealing with. But on average, this just show you the, the spread of our wastewater treatment works. That you must try and have a wastewater treatment plant close to, in, cl close to all the uh, villages if they are villages or townships if they are townships. Because we, we are trying to shorten the distance of transporting the, the wastewater from the customer to the, to the treatment plant. So we also have got the sea outfalls. That's where we, we use the biological, biological reaction to treat the, the wastewater and just discharge directly into the sea. We discharge in Hot Bay, at Kent Bay, and also Greenpoint. And the others we treat and discharge in the nearby rivers of which they are from the rivers, most of those rivers are also flowing <coughs> into the sea. This just show you the, the dirtiness of the water that we deal with. Like, as the municipality, we cannot discharge the water at this stage back into the rivers or into the sea. It won't be, it won't be a good thing for the environment because this is very toxic. It, this cocktail is it's something very bad. <laughs> so we, we do our best to make sure that by the time they, this water leaves, the wastewater treatment works. It's not going to be dangerous to the ecosystem. The fish, the, all the organisms that are living in the rivers must be able to live after we discharge our effluent. If we are discharging into the sea, people must still feel safe to swim, into, to swim in those beaches and also have their recreational activities. But if we discharge it directly as it is, you can just imagine the trouble that we can get from the, from the community. So what actually happened, we receive wastewater from the customer. <coughs> we have got screens where all the solid stuff are, are separated from the water. So it's just like a sieve where we block all this, all the solid stuff, then we, we use the word grid. <coughs> then we have got guys who, we have, who, who have got contract with us. They just came there on a daily basis to collect all those solid waste that have been removed from the wastewater. Although with this, we are trying uh, to encourage uh, school kids as well to be aware about the impact of what they throw at the toilet. Because most of the, most of the solid waste that we remove in it, we find that those are sanitary stuff. People just dump in the toilet to flush. As long as it goes down the toilet, they think it's safe. You know, they don't realize as to where, is this, the where these things are going. So we had a chat with most of the school kids. And some indicated that they never knew that uh, someone else will see these things once I flush it there. So for them, it's like it has gone. No one will ever see that. But those things end up in the wastewater treatment, treatment plant. So that can be avoided because now we are having massive stuff that we need to find a place to, to dispose. 
And then once we, we remove the solid waste, we have got a biological reaction where we had to deal with the high level of ammonia, the high level of nitrates, the phosphates, uh, and the E. coli, all the things need to be dealt with. And then from, from that stage, we will end up having a final treated effluent. Final treated effluent, it, it won't be it won't be safe for drinking, but it should be safe for ecosystem. If we discharge it to the rivers, the fish can still survive, but we don't encourage people to drink at that stage. Then, before we discharge it to the nearby rivers, we make sure that we chlorinate it to reduce the level of bacteria and, uh, and, and viruses. Sometimes uh, it also ends in the, in the, in the, the sea. This is an example of the picture taken from Arsenal where we also have got the ponds. So from the wastewater it goes to the ponds, from the ponds it goes to the nearby river which happened to be Black River in an in Athlon case. So sometimes we even take it back to the, to the sea. So and as a result you will end up having those big fishes because there's high nutrients. You know, fishes are not starving. Uh, birds end up hovering over because there's more fishes. But it's, a, it's something that is natural because when you've got fish, birds end up having enough food. So birds will also come, you will find birds in high numbers as well. This is just an example of the challenge that we experience. People dump those type, those type of stuff in the storm water, which end up on the sewage system. So most of the time when we've got sewage blockage, we find stuff like this. So there is a serious awareness campaign that needs to be happened to just you know alert people <coughs> on the impact of what they dump into the storm water because most of them is because of lack of knowledge and we are cons consistently having sewage blockage at this stage and it's costing us a lot. That's actually where our wastewater goes from Mozambique side, it goes to Cape Flats. As a result of trying to make sure that we get a good water quality from the wastewater treatment works, we are also using the membrane. This is the latest technology, which ensures that the water that, uh, that leaves the wastewater treatment works is of best quality because now we are being regulated by the Department of Water Affairs. They set very high standards to say we don't want to see coal life from the water from, from the water that we are discharging from your plant. And all those other parameters, water quality parameters, they are trying to tighten the belt to make sure that we comply. And for us to comply, we also need to up our game and make sure that we look at the research technology so that we don't kill our rivers and our beaches. So those are just some of the pictures that I took that just show some of the wastewater treatment works. This one is Athlon and Laduna. And then we've got Benville. We have got Cape Flats. <coughs> this one I just put it there just, just to show you that we also produce sludge as part of the wastewater treatment plant, waste, wastewater treatment works. We produce high volume of sludge, which is also giving us headache. As to where do we take that sludge? So currently we do have company, we do have contractors who assist us by delivering sludge out of the wastewater treatment works to the landfill site. We have got a site where we just line it out. Sometimes we just plow it on the on the on the, on the farms. But it's not sustainable. We need to find ways where we can utilize this sludge beneficially. Couldn't you use microwaves and uh, sterilize it instead of just fertilizer? We do have company that is doing that. So they get the, the sludge from us, then they do that. They do that. But as a city, we don't. Uh, we, we are not a company where we can produce that and sell. Ours is to treat the water. What we do with the sludge, then we try and engage communities to say, is there anything good that you can do with the sludge? Then we, we give them that sludge for free because we don't have space to, to place that sludge. But if we find someone who have got innovation, 
to do something better with that sludge. We are happy to engage with that person because as a result we are benefiting because instead of us having an ache to find a place to dump the sludge, now we have got someone who is taking that sludge. Have you tried earthworms? Sorry? Earthworms. It's a biological process. It's, it, 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 it is happening because even within, the, within our facilities, so we're, as part of composting, we were looking at using the earthworms. But it's, it's not sustainable. The amount of slide that is coming out is, is very much. You will need a, a, a dedicated project to deal with that. Okay. The last part is about the quality. How do we ensure that the water that we are distributing to our customers is of good quality? We do have laboratories in Santriami and Athlon. Those, Santriami, those laboratories are managed by the scientific services branch. So we collect water samples on a daily basis that we test for, for E. coli, for, for for all those water quality parameters that are harmful to, for human consumption. So every day we are busy at, at, at determining the status of water throughout the city of Cape Town. So most of the instruments are, automate, are automated because we do we receive large number of samples. Like on a daily basis we receive about 294 samples that represent water that we receive from the city of Cape Town. As much as we cannot sample every house, we make sure that close to your home there is a, a tap that we do sample to get an indication of water quality in that particular area. Thank you. Uh, do you add fluoride to the water anywhere in Cape Town? Fluoride. We do use fluoride, although we are trying to run away from it. Uh, in forest treatment works, we, we, we treat using ferric, which is mostly fluoride. But uh, it's something that uh, we, we use phosphate. We use uh, sodium phosphate is one of the chemicals that we, we use. Fluoride is also one of the chemicals that we use, depending on the type of water, because we receive different types of water, depending on, on the water source. The water that is coming from Stenbrass Dam is different from the water that is coming from Temple Mountain. So we look at the chemistry of water and determine which, which chemicals are better suited to treat that particular water. What part of Cape Town gets fluoride water, or fluorinated water? Uh, I can say even Mozambique, the water that comes from Fore have got some fluoride as well. From Fore? Fore and Black East. And where is that used? Fore and Black East supply uh, Mozambique and the surrounding areas, Belfast side, uh, uh, Kailicha, Guguletu, all those areas. And around here? Uh, also, yeah. Also, yeah. Also, yeah. Yes. Another question? But you, I'm, I'm not saying that the fluoride is also one of the water quality parameters that we are assessed on by the Department of Water Affairs. There is a set limit that we don't, we have to make sure that we don't exceed that limit because it becomes problematic to human health if we exceed that limit. So there are standards that we have to comply with. If we are not complying, we also get penalized for that. So as part of, uh, of scientific services uh, looking at water quality, every day we make sure that we look at that. The pH, the conductivity, alkalinity, those are the stuff that are affected by the fluoride levels. So if fluoride level is not up to standard, we will see by the changes of pH and, uh, and alkalinity, then we can take measures right away. 
but I can't tell you that I feel this question yet. I think you've heard about the Nestle's very good quality drinking water, very happy with it. But what is the water quality from the other municipalities in South Africa? <coughs> you, do they all pass? Or? Yeah, some, some don't pass. We do have something called the Blue Drop system. Blue, if you can Google uh, Blue Drop, you can find how municipalities are rated on how good they are in managing drinking water. And we do have blue drop status. We've got a certificate to indicate that you are doing well in providing good water quality. Not all municipalities have that. What, what percentage pass? Because uh, in the Cape Town. <coughs> Currently, uh, we, we do have results from 2012 for the blue drop assessment. Currently, it's been, uh, I can say it's been politicized at this stage when the results have been withheld because when certain municipalities consistently doing good, they can use that for political agenda to say, listen, we, we are so I cannot provide the current status, but 2012 results indicate that we were doing very well and uh, Jobek and uh, uh, Etequin, we were, we were leading the, the pack. But as for other municipalities, I cannot say because they might have improved over the years, but we don't have those results at this stage. But 2012 was three years, three years ago. Uh, we, we got assessed every now and then. It's just the results that are we are withheld by the government. They are not give, being published. So when you look on the website, you, you can see the 2012 results. Not that we don't have results. We are given the results as the municipality to say, this is, this is how you performed. And I can say with the pride that we performed well. But it's, it's the publication of results for, it to, for everyone to, to have access to, which is, uh, which is uh, problematic at this stage. How strong is the section of the city that does planning and research? Because one, I don't know whether it's 50 or 20 years, but it has been uh, estimated that 20, 50 years you will run out of water. Also, uh, like the, 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 the sludge, not the sludge or the, the effluent, yeah. methane gas that can be utilized. Yeah. Is the, the, the city planning or researching that? And the, the, the sludge, uh, is there not a university or something involved, a department that can utilize that and, and make money and make our water cheaper? We, we are looking at, uh, at the impact of climatic change. We do have a, a team dedicated on looking at the impact climate change we, we, we made to the city. Because we, we all know that the, the climate change is not, a, it's not, it's not, it's not just a theory, it's a reality, it will happen. But the, the impact will differ from one area to another. You cannot say because other areas are encountering high rainfall because of climate change, we will also encounter high rainfall. We might a, a, a experience extreme dry as a result of climate change. And the answer we are looking at changing that picture that I just to say, we are currently relying 98% on, on surface water, only 2% on, on groundwater. So we, we consider that uh, that is a it's a worrying point to say, listen, we must start doing something to change that picture. And we, we are using research to back up our, our reasoning to say, listen, if we don't do anything now, something will happen. Are we prepared to, to deal with that crisis when it happens? And then that's why we are making sure that we are prepared to provide people with water even if our rivers are running dry. But those are some of the things that we, we are also looking at desalination, which is also a, an expensive exercise. Is there a specialized section? Who is in charge? We, we don't necessarily have a specialized section, but I'm also part of research team within research development looking at uh, other options. So depending on the type of project, like talking about sludge, we are working with the UCT people to try and come up with, with the ways of utilizing sludge effectively. We also have got private companies. They are also, who are also coming in to say, listen, we can build houses out of the sludges. 
and they are saying that there are houses that they build from sludges. They are very warm. Whether it's cold, it's a cold season or it's winter or it's it's a, it's a summer season, you still get this uh, warm temperature inside the house, which is a good thing. So they are looking at that, but as to whether people will change their perception, because when people realize that I'm living in a sludge house, it, 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 it changes their mindset. But before they know that it was built out of sludge, the perception was very good that this is a high-class house, but the moment you tell them that we build this out of sludge, it changes the whole perception. So those are some of the things. Innovations are there, but they need to be accepted by the public as well. So I would love to let this run for another half an hour because it's a wonderful topic and it's important to us. But of course, when the, when the lads go out, if they go out, then I want you to get out here, out here safely. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to actually say thank you so much once more. It was wonderful that you <coughs> With your permission, we will invite you again. Okay. When we've got, when we've got the big group, I think our students will also benefit okay. from, uh, from the knowledge that you've been able to share with us. So on behalf of everybody here, I'd like to thank